Kakalosh Boker Or. We are on Mesech Batra, Perek Shishi. This is the new chapter, sixth chapter, the Tzadik Beta Mudalef, 92a. The Mishnah starts by saying, Hamocher Perot Lachavirot. If you're going to sell grains to your friend, remember, Perot not only is just fruits, it's also types of grains. So here it could be any type of kidniot or tvua, right? You're selling it to your friend. Now, you didn't explain whether these are going to be for planting or for eating. Uzra'an. So he came and he planted them. And it didn't sprout forth. Even if it's going to be zerapishtan, which the majority is done for planting and not for eating, he's not obligated to come and to return the money. Because since he could say, listen, I sold it to you to eat, right? You didn't tell me anything and I sold it to you to eat. So therefore, it does not retract. But what happens if he sold them? Zirunegina. Zirunegina are the seeds of the garden which are not eaten. So therefore, it's only fitting for planting. And now the guy comes and he planted and it didn't sprout forth. So they were defective. So in such a case, he has to give it back because it's considered a mekach ta'ud. Says the Gemara, Itmar, it was stated, Imagine somebody comes and he sells a short to his friend. And he's found to be a nakhan. Nakhan means he's a gore. So the only thing that you could really do the shore is to do shehita. Yeah, some people, there's all, that's the only thing that you could do. Yeah, shehita. So what happens? He comes and he says, Rav Amar Rav comes and he says, It's mekhtahut. Why? Because he probably wanted it also for plowing and also for this. And, all, and now he wasn't able to. So therefore, it's going to be a mekhtahut. Shmuel Amar, Shmuel says, no. I sold it to you for a shehita. So says the Gemara, one second. Why don't you see, right, what is the lokeach ragil to buy? Meaning this guy, is he an investor? Or is he just, uh, he likes to have barbecue, so he, you know, he wants to have the good meat. Just check, check on that. If it's for the bemet, the shita, for the shita. And if it's going to be for harisha, it's going to be for harisha. Answer the gemara, the gabra de zavin lachi lachi. He does both. He's also a good investor, but he also likes the meat. So since he does both, so therefore, right, it's going to be both cases. Okay? Why don't you check the money? Why? If you're going to buy a cow or an ox for plowing, it's going to be much more valuable, much more expensive than an ox just for shechita. Shechita just means I'm going to come and I'm going to eat it. So therefore, it's a lower price. If I'm going to come and I'm going to sell it to you for working, it's a much higher value. Check the money. Yeah? Show me the money. Check the value. How much was it? What was it? So he says, What are we talking about? The price of meat went up and it became the price of the meat of the basically of the cow, right? Of the plowing. So therefore, since it's going to be the same price, so now you cannot uh, differentiate between the prices. So says the Gemara, So what's enough Kamina then? At the end of the day, it's the same value of money. So for what's enough kamina then, right? Whether it's going to be mekach kayam or not kayim, kayam, it's exact same value. So he says, no, enough kamina la tircha. Enough kamina is the tircha of slaughtering the cow, right? Because according to Rav, since the mekach is batel, he doesn't have to do slaughtering the cow. cow. He just give it back to him and give, give me the money back. But according to the other shita, he says, no, it's a good it's a good mekach. And therefore you have to take care of the cow, of the slaughtering and of doing all, right, of this work as well. So it says the Gemara, Right, What's the case then? So says the Gemara, Tzadik Bet Amubet. Yes, ninety-two B. If we're talking about where you cannot take the money, which means that he doesn't have money to give it back, meaning sometimes that's happened. You pay somebody and they spent the money, so they don't have the money to give it back to you, right? So he says, Liakiv Torah Bezuze. So therefore, <laughs> why don't you just leave it, right? That you should leave it by him as a pidan chov. The people say, Min mare shutach, paare ipara. He comes and he says like this. He says, from the Balchov, whatever he gives you, accept it. Meaning if somebody owes you money, doesn't matter what it is. that, he, that Whatever you're able to receive, receive it. Even if it's going to be bread, if it's going to be anything. Why? If not, when are you going to get it? Uh, a, so therefore you're going to do that. So says the Gimana, what are we dealing with? He says, the ika lishtelume, he comes and he says, right, 
that you have in the hands of the mocher, right? You have the money, right, in order to pay for it. And therefore, according to Rav, it's batel, because he has the money, give back the money, right? And therefore, you have to give him back the money. And therefore, he can't just come and just take anything else for the chov, right? Because you have the money. But according to Shmuel, that it's a good demekach. So therefore, obviously, right, we're not talking about that because the short actually stays yours. Rav Amar. Rav comes and he says, why is it a mekach ta'ut? He says, rekach ta'ut, he says, batar ruba zina. The ruba, the radia zavi. He says, you know why, Behemet, it's going to be a mekach ta'ut? It's a mekach ta'ut because we go after the majority, which means in Mamonot, we always go after the majority. The ruba, the majority of the people, they buy it for plowing. But Shmuel is going to tell you, when are we going to go after the rov? Be'isura, to do with Mamon, to do with uh, Isur, which is basically Isur Veter. But to do with Mamona, we don't go after the rov. So we have the mnemonic, right? The Siman. Right, you have in a in a in bracket siman isha, right? The eved shor shvarim perot. Okay, so where are the two dots? Okay, so the better move two dots. Meitvei, we're going to ask the following question: Haisha shenital mina or nidgarsha. Imagine a woman becomes widowed or divorced. Vehi omeret, and she says betulan is satani. He got married to me when I was a betula, right? And therefore, how much is her ketuba? Two hundred zuz. Chazak baruch. And he comes and he says, Lo, I got married to you when you were an almana. And therefore, the how much is it? 100, which is a mana. Remember, mana, mana is a shem mana, right? On 100. So it's 100 zus. If there's a deen that she came out with her hair, right? That basically is going to be in such a fashion, right? Of that it's like with the tsaif, which is covering herself in Rosha parua, her hair is, is uncovered. Which that was a minhad ketubata matayim. The ketuba is going to be two hundred. By the way, this is alacha, which actually changes why when a woman gets married for a second time, is she allowed to go out with a veil or not? There's a whole question no, of the poskim because simple. obviously this was the siman that it was going to be for a betula. So therefore, it's not that simple that a woman could come right and do whatever she wants at a wedding because then it actually changes right the alachot. So says the gemara. One second, taama. Right, the reasoning why is what he comes and he says. The reason why he says is is that he says the ikadim only because there is going to be witnesses. So we we know whether she was a betula or not a betula. Halek ayedim, right? But he says one second. But if there's no witnesses, obviously she's not going to be believed. Now says the Gemara that my why lema halech achar rov anashim the rov nashim betulot. He says, I don't understand you. When the girls get married, what is the majority? The majority are betulot. So therefore, if the majority of women, meaning if you're going to come and you're going to do a statistics, who are the majority of people getting married? It's always betulot, right? So therefore, what's going on exactly? So, okay, I didn't want to go there, right? I didn't want to go there, right? But uh, yeah, the concept is, is that the majority, right, are going to be betulot. And therefore, if the majority are going to be betulot, right, what's going on? So he comes and he says, yeah, he says this. So I'm a Rava, Rava comes and he says, Mishum because we could say, Rov Nashim betulot nisot, umiut almanot. Okay, fine. There's a Rov, but there's a mute. Rov is what? The majority that they're betulot. Mute, the minority, or almanot. Becholani said betula. Now, anybody that gets married as a betula, yishlakol. Yes, la call. There's a call. There's a there's a rumor. I Many people know about it, right? That this girl is getting married. The zo now this girl, right? Why is there no call, right? The way that she got married. It's la la ruba. It goes against the rov. So since it yeah, goes against that. right the rov, so therefore now you don't have any more the rov. Meaning, if I would have just stam went again with according with the rov, so why does she need witnesses? Well, majority, you don't need any witnesses, right? And that's it. She says no. Really, she has a role. But the problem is there's no call. If there's no call, which means that you don't have that everyone's talking about that she's getting married. So therefore, it ruins, right, the rov. The rov was that she got married as a bitula. Now, the fact that there's no, you know, there's no simcha spot and all these other things. That, ah, she's, you know, this girl's getting married. So therefore, it's actually coming and ruining, right, the concept of the rov. Yeah. 
So one second, if you're going to tell me now that every single time a Betula gets married, there's a call, and everyone knows about it. You see it, all the neighbors come by the thing, they make all the nice, beautiful things, and they come out of the house. It's a it's a very beautiful thing. So in one second, right? So if there's going to be a deen, what, what is it then? If there's not going to be any call, yeah? Yeah, if there's not going to be any call, so sad shakranin. These are these are a deen, which are shakranin. They're liars. What does it help me now, right, the entire time, right, if at the end of the day they're going to be lying? Yeah? So you come and he says like this. Okay. He comes and he says like this. He says, right, the entire concept that we're speaking about is Rov Hanisaot Betulot Yeshlenkol, the Zohuel Melakol Itlaruba. Says the Gimara, right, we have to actually fix the answer of Ravina. What did Ravina say? Ravina says, Kol aniset betula yesh lakol. Vezuel ven lakol it la laruba. Which means, anybody that gets married as a betula, there's a call. And since this woman doesn't have a call, so obviously there's no rov. There's no rov anisot yesh lakol. Like Meaning, because if you're going to tell me every woman that gets married as a betula, there's a call. So why is there no call? So therefore, obviously, that means even if you do have witnesses, there are... They're, 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 they're shakrani. She just fabricated two witnesses, and that's it. No, the majority of the girls, they have a call. So the fact that this girl does not have a call, that she was a betula, so it it ruins the rov, and therefore she needs witnesses. But when she gets witnesses, the witnesses are going to be okay. So Tashima, we're going to try to bring now another proof. If you're going to sell a slave to your friend, ganav or huyustus, now, the slave is found to be a ganav or a gonev nefashot. Yeah? Right? Gonev nefashot. Yeah. You need me to translate. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Mer- well, uh, it, uh, how do you call it? He robs people. He, he, how do you call this? He is sequestrado. Como se dice? Um, a thief. Yeah, but the thief is that he's coming and he's, uh, he's taking people for ransom. Yeah? Kidnapper. Kidnap. A kidnap. Whenever the first one. Yeah. So he says, huh? Yeah, but, uh, no, but uh, that's what we're not talking about here. Because, well, the, that's the first one. The first one is a ganav. Ganav could be anything. Ganav could be a the scam artist. Uh, yeah, arm bandit, anything. So he says, he gyo. It is going to be good. It's going to be considered a good sale. But if he's found to be an armed bandit, then no. Because then he actually kills people. Meaning if it's just Tom that he's going to be, you know, the, you know, one thing, that's okay. But here that he's actually Mamash, uh, you know, uh, kid, you know, he's a murderer, that no. Or if he's Muhtabla Malchut, if he's going to be written to the Malchut that they have to kill him. So therefore, Omerlo, he could say, right? Right? What does that mean? This is yours. What does that mean? The Mekach is Batel and it goes back. This is yours. Right? Why? Nothing to do with me. I'm not going to buy this thing. Okay? Was was basically this type of an evid, he's already dead. So therefore, right, it's not it's not good sale. So says the Gemara, Reisha, right, my time, ah, what's the reasoning why the Reisha, it is a good Mekah? One more time, when he was a thief or he was a Kuvustus, it's a good sale. Only if he's going to be an armed ba- uh, ba- you know, bandit or he's written to the government to be killed, then no. What's the difference? So says the Gemara, Are we not going to say that Listen, the majority of the Ganavim, right? The majority of the Avadim, they're Ganavim. Yeah, the majority of them are already Ganavim. So if you're already going to tell me the majority of Ganavim, so obviously it's Magyo. It's going to be fine. Says the no. Kulu Achitnu. He says, all of them are like that. What does that mean? It's not that the Rover are like that. All of them are like that. And therefore, since all of them are like that, that's why it's Magyo. <laughs>